Good evening, sisters and brothers, and uh, welcome to our evening prayer this evening. Uh, it is Tuesday evening, <clears throat> Tuesday the 15th of, um, of June. And so let's, uh, let's come together to pray and to bring this day to a close as we seek God's grace for this night. As much as God has been gracious to us today, we do not take his grace for granted. We are grateful for the night that is ahead of us as we bring this day to a close. We thank him, we thank him, and we commit ourselves to him afresh tonight. And so let's pray. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. And um, Revelation 21, I saw the holy city coming down out of heaven from God. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, <clears throat> prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them and they shall be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. And the one who sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Amen. I saw the holy city coming down out of heaven from God. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And our collect for this evening. Abide with us, Lord, for it is evening and days drawing to a close. Abide with us and with your whole church in the evening of the day, in the evening of life, in the evening of the world. Abide with us and with all your faithful ones, O Lord, in time and in eternity. Amen. And uh, let me take a moment to blow my nose. Okay, our psalm for this evening is Psalm uh, Psalm 50, Psalm 50. <clears throat> Psalm 50. The mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to where it sets. From Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and will not be silent. A fire devours before him, and around him a tempest rages. He summons the heavens above and the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me this consecrated people who made a covenant with me by sacrifice, and the heavens proclaim his righteousness for he is a God of justice. Listen, my people, and I will speak. I will testify against you, Israel. I am God, your God. I bring no charges against you concerning your sacrifices or concerning your burnt offerings, which are ever before me. I have no need of a bull from your stall or of goats from your pens. 
for every animal of the forest is mine <coughs> and the cattle on a thousand hills I know every bird in the mountains and the insects in the fields are mine if I were hungry I would not tell you for the world is mine and all that is in it do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats sacrifice thank offerings to God fulfill your vows to the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble I will deliver you and you will honor me but to the wicked person God says what right have you to recite my laws or take my covenant on your lips you hate my instruction and cast my words behind you when you see a thief you join with him you throw in your lot with adulterers you use your mouth for evil and harness your tongue to deceit you sit and testify against your brother and slander your own mother's son when you did these things and i kept silent you thought i was exactly like you but i now arraign you and set my accusations before you consider this you who forget god or i will tear you to pieces with no one to rescue you those who sacrifice thank offerings honor me and to the blameless i will show my salvation amen all right let me read one of keller's meditation and he calls it um he calls it judgment begins the nations are summoned around zion to hear God speak in verses 1 and 2. We expect God will be judging the heathens, but instead we are startled to find that he's assembling the nations to witness as he brings testimony against his own people. Verses 5 to 7. God's judgment begins with God's household. 1 Peter 4 and verse 17. While our salvation in Christ assures us that our sins can't bring us into ultimate condemnation, it also means that with our greater spiritual resources, God holds us more responsible for living as he prescribes. To whom much is given, much will be required. Luke 12, 48. Christians are more loved and pardoned and yet called to a stricter account at the same time indeed and what, what keller is mentioning sisters and brothers is that we who are in the new covenant situation we are more um, accountable than those of the old covenant those in david's days because we have received more revelation of Christ than they did. And so to whom much is given, much is required. God will judge us more severely based on the information we have, based on the revelation that we have. And God's people today have received more of God's revealed, revealed word in Jesus Christ than the believers of old. And so we will be held to a higher standard and so we need to be very careful um, how much how how we live how we how we appropriate God's truth in our lives because we are held to a higher standard than those of old judgment begins with God's people okay the prayer Lord, we praise you that, like a good father, you love your children far more than others, yet you hold them to far stricter standard. It is only when we grasp both of these truths that we change for the better, escaping both self-hate and self-indulgence. Infuse them deep into my heart by your Spirit. Amen. In just a second okay our New Testament reading this evening is Luke 
Luke chapter 13 and verse uh, verse 10 to 21. Luke 13, 10 to 21. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues, and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When she saw, uh, when Jesus saw her, the opposite, when Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue ruler said to the people, There are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, You hypocrites! Doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? When he said this, all his opponents were humiliated. But the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. And Jesus asked, What is the kingdom of God like? What shall I compare it to? It is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds of the air perched on its branches. Again he asked, what shall I compare the kingdom of God to? It is like yeast that the woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. Amen. So you have two things here. You have the, well, in a sense you have three things. Uh, you have the, the, the healing of the crippled woman, which is, um, which, which is Jesus's uh, teaching um, well it's, it's not his teaching his his miracle which is a a, 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 a a demonstration that's the word it's a demonstration of the kingdom of God okay the kingdom of God has come and the kingdom of God is here and one of the things the kingdom of God does is restore broken bodies okay so those who are bent over will be made straight again and literally, that, that, that's one of the things the kingdom of God will do. But of course, th that's one aspect. And then the second bit is the, 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 the synagogue people are upset that Jesus could heal someone on the Sabbath. And Jesus' point to them is that what is more important, to look after your animals on the Sabbath or to bring salvation, deliverance, to someone who's been bound by the devil for eight, for 18 long years what is what is your priority what is what is a priority for you on the sabbath even on the sabbath your donkeys your animals need to be fed and watered and if you take the time to feed and water them and do not allow religious uh, re 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 religious restrictions to stop you from doing that, nothing should stop you from doing good on the Sabbath, from, from bringing salvation, from bringing deliverance to someone who needs it. And so Jesus redefines, as it were, the Sabbath and the principle of the Sabbath. That the Sabbath, I mean, he goes further in another section to talk about the Sabbath was made for man and so forth, and he's Lord of the Sabbath. Here, he's simply making the point that the Sabbath, the, the religious rule, should not hinder us from doing that which is good, that which is, is, 
is beneficial for others. Because remember, this is kingdom work. Kingdom work can be, should be done anytime, not just six days a week. Kingdom work is, is 24 seven. You see, the Sabbath doesn't stop us from doing that which brings glory to God, that which is a demonstration of the kingdom of God. And, and that's why, sisters and brothers, it's important for us because it means that Jesus is freeing us up to be, to be generous and to bring compassion and kindness and, and salvation, frankly, deliverance to people who are in need, even, even, to, even on Sabbath day. If, if you observe a Sabbath day. But it's not just a Sabbath day. The point is, you're not to allow relig religious rules and religious um, obligations to stop us from doing kingdom work. Kingdom work comes first. Okay, so, okay, so then the third point is the actual teaching on the kingdom of God. So, first he demonstrates what the kingdom will look like, and that with this woman, one example of kingdom example, uh, 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 the kingdom of God means that someone who is bent over, bound by Satan, and Jesus, notice Jesus recognized that this is not just a physical ailment. This physical problem arises from a spiritual problem. Sisters and brothers, that's another aspect of this story. Not every problem, not every physical problem come from spiritual oppression of the enemy. But some do. And sometimes it's, it's recognizing that, that there is a spiritual underlying uh, uh, um, foundation to the problem that, you, that we have that manifests itself in our physical bodies. And sometimes we need to we need to be aware of this because sometimes our physical problems, this is, this is you know, I, 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 I think Christians miss this point so often. Sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes our sickness, our suffering, whatever it is that we're going through, comes from underlying spiritual forces in our lives. And, um, and many times, what is going to bring the healing in the physical is to sort out the spiritual. Maybe prayer, maybe studying God's word, maybe drawing nearer to God in worship. And the more we draw nearer to him, the more that healing comes in the body itself. So sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes our physical problem is a, is, is a is a result of a deeper spiritual problem. And the spiritual problem needs to be dealt with first and the, and the physical will follow. The, of course, the last bit is the kingdom of God. Jesus compares the kingdom of God to two things, mustard seed and yeast. Mustard seed, the smallest of seeds, he says, but when you plant it in the garden, it grew and becomes a tree and the birds of the air. So the kingdom of God is like a small mustard seed. It's, it's tiny in its beginning, but as it grows, it becomes a, 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 a tree. It becomes a, a huge tree that provides uh, uh, um, what do you call it? Um, he said, uh, he said, shelter for birds and food and so forth but the point that jesus is making is that the tree becomes a, a tree of life uh that the kingdom of god grows and becomes something of use that's the word something of value something that is useful in our lives like a tree is is useful for birds but secondly the kingdom of god is like yeast Again, it's like yeast that the woman puts in the dough and she kneads it in the dough and, and it, it, it takes up, it, it becomes a part of the, of, of the flower and when it is, it, it, and then it rises and gives body to the flower, to the dough. And the kingdom of God is like that. In our world, 
the kingdom of God, you could say surreptitiously uh, uh, is, is, is needed into the society, into the culture, and it then grows and makes an influence, be influential, make a difference in our society and in our culture. So two things, two uh, analogy or two parables of the kingdom. One is like a mustard seed, small, but grows and become useful. Secondly, it's like yeast, still small, but it's, it, it penetrates the society. It penetrates the culture in such a way that it becomes, it influences society, it influences culture, but you don't really see it as such. Just like yeast, you can't take the yeast out anymore. And so the kingdom of God is like that. It will, it will impact society, but you can't pinpoint it or you can't take it out. You, it, it, will, it will benefit society in the, the society at large, but many people will not realize that it's because of the kingdom of God why society is the way it is. You know, it is, it is like this in Western Europe. I've always said, you know, our Western Europe have democracy and freedom and, and all these things that we have here. Um, many of these things came as a result of the Christian influence in Western Europe. It's the kingdom of God influencing our society. We are losing some of these things because, of course, we are losing the, the, the values that underpin the Christian values that underpin uh, our society. And so some of these things are, are, being, are being eroded because the Christian value, the Christian values are being neglected. But that is what the kingdom of God has done throughout Western Europe and will continue to do through the world before Jesus returns. That's it. Let's pray. <laughs> okay so we thank you lord for bringing us to the end of another day we thank you for your goodness and mercy to us today we think of the kingdom of god in our lives and the kingdom of god in our world though there are so many people who benefit from the from the benefits of the kingdom but yet they are outside of the kingdom they enjoy the benefits of the kingdom but they themselves do not submit to kingdom rules and kingdom values lord we think of people even in our own family tonight who themselves benefit from the from from a society in which we live that that has values that come from Christ and yet they have never bowed the knee to Christ Lord we pray for them we pray for those in our own family who have yet to surrender to Jesus who have yet to to be straightened up by Jesus himself because they have been bent over by the cares and concerns and worries and frankly the sin the burden of sin in this world and so lord we pray for your healing touch upon them so that they will experience a demonstration of the kingdom power in their lives that their their lives will be straightened out and the power the spiritual power that binds them will be broken by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, so many people in our society, in our community, in our world, are bound by Satan and are bent over and do not realize that their problem is a spiritual, has spiritual roots. And until those spiritual roots are uprooted and, and, and discarded by Christ will they be set free and so Lord we pray for our world we pray for those who are bound by Satan we ask Lord for deliverance deliverance in our families deliverance in our society 
deliverance in our country in western europe we think of the uh, the 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 fact that so many places in Western Europe have neglected the kingdom values that was once that once permeated the society like yeast in dough. And so, Lord, we pray that our society will return again, will be spiritually straightened out and, and delivered from the bondage, the spiritual bondage that holds them captive. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember those who are sick tonight and we think of those who are still suffering physically and emotionally in body and mind. And we ask for God's healing touch on them we pray that, oh God, that you will straighten out those who are physically suffering tonight. Uh, deliver them from the sickness and pain that they might be going through tonight. Mentally, emotionally, physically. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and our night prayer. Guide us waking, O oh Lord, and guard us sleeping that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous and all for your love's sake. Amen. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord look kindly upon you. May the Lord give you peace and rest tonight, sisters and brothers, as you sleep. May the Lord strengthen you in body and mind and give you a good night's sleep despite the heat uh, we are going through. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed night, sisters and brothers.